So you're looking for the best photo and video editing laptop. You're trying to combine those two skill sets into the perfect machine to accomplish the tasks on your day-to-day -day routine. So I'm here to break down not only the recommendations I have, but also the specs and some tips for picking out the best video editing and photo editing laptop for your needs. All right, I'm gonna make this as brief as possible, but at the same time, I wanna unpack what you really need and the specs that are important to have for this laptop that you're looking for. I don't want you to just grab a couple of recommendations and then go out and buy them not knowing what you're actually purchasing. I want you to make a good qualified decision. So if you're curious about the exact models that I recommend in this video, you can head down into the description below, check the pricing, check the specs of each one and see if it fits uh, what you're looking to accomplish as far as the power you need in the computer for the video editing and photo editing you're going to be doing, as well as perhaps maybe the color accuracy, screen size, um, ergonomics, um, the usability of the machine, what ports are on the side. Those are things that you'll find out when you click on those links. I'm gonna really dive in and give you a good overview so you can make the qualified decision for you. Now, the first thing I wanna dive into is the performance. That's really probably one of the main reasons that you're here. Will this computer be able to handle the work that I'm gonna throw at it? So you're gonna get a little interesting here because you can have the best photo editing computer and you can have the best video editing computer, but how do you combine those two? And that's what we're talking about. So the first thing I always look at is the RAM. I wanna make sure that I can run both of these programs at the same time. Because a lot of times in my day-to-day -day workflow, I'll be editing a video and then I'll click export and then it takes usually anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to export my video. In that amount of time, I can start editing and working on my photo for my thumbnail for my channel. And so that boosts my workflow. If I didn't have enough RAM, say 16 to 32 gigs of RAM is really good for a fast pace photo editing, video editing laptop. You can get away with 16, you could even get away with eight, but you're gonna start to take away the ability to multitask with your machine. So 16 is a great benchmark. It's a good middle of the road. If you go higher, you're gonna get a little more performance, a little more flexibility. If you go lower, you're gonna get a little bit less. And so what I like to do is I like to work in both edit photos and be editing videos at the same time, while also jamming in music and maybe doing a little research on a few browser windows. Now, you wanna complement that with an i7 processor. You say, well, why i7? Why can't I get an i5? Well, you could, um, I just get concerned that if you're trying to run multiple programs at the same time, you're gonna pull a lot of power away from that processor, it's gonna bog down your machine, and you're not gonna be as efficient in your workflow. That i5 will you give you the performance you need, but you may only be able to do one to two tasks at a time. So keep that in mind. All right, so the next thing I wanna move into is the graphics processing unit. For photo editing, you don't touch the graphics processing unit. That's totally fine using the integrated Intel 620 graphics processing unit, for instance. But if you're gonna be doing video editing, I recommend at least a GTX 1050 graphics processing unit. This gives you the power you need for rendering and playback. If you wanna to increase to say the 1060, 1070, the new RTX 2060 through 2080, I mean, those are fantastic GPUs. It's just how fast do you want to go? Um, you're gonna get up into those RTX models and you're gonna get faster rendering times and smoother playback. I myself use the GTX 1050 in my Dell XPS 15 and I think it's a great GPU. It's not the fastest, but it accomplishes what I need it to accomplish. All right, the next thing I wanna look at is the hard drive. And without a doubt, I'm gonna lean you towards the solid state hard drive. This makes a difference for both photo editing and video editing. For photo editing, you're gonna get faster load times, faster save times, and smoother program runs. For video editing, you're gonna be able to export faster to that solid state hard drive. I did benchmark tests between hard disk drive and solid state hard drive, and I found that the hard disk drive took double the time of the solid state to export. So for workflow, you're gonna get a huge boost in your workflow by using the solid state hard drive. All right, another thing that's really important to photo editors, I'd say a little bit more than it is to video editors, just because when you're video editing, if you know much about it, you're gonna be in Premiere Pro or you're gonna be in Final Cut and the, the window's already pretty small. Um, so like the huge screen doesn't make a super big difference. But if you're photo editing, that big screen, you're gonna be able to see a lot clearer. You're gonna be able to see those shadows. It just makes for a better experience. And so something with a bigger screen, say like the Hero or the Strix 2, uh, will give you a really good experience for photo editing. And it will also give you the power that you need for video editing. So screen size is a really personal thing. Um, I've always been fine with just a 15 inch, but you could feel differently. 
The color accuracy though is something that's very important for all photo editors and video editors. You wanna make sure that the colors that you're producing on your screen are the colors that are gonna be seen by everyone. So all the laptops I have listed below have at least 90% color accuracy. I did that to really skim out all the other models that I looked at that had great performance, they were light, they were fast, but they didn't have the color accuracy you needed. So you can eliminate all those options and check out those ones in the description below. Uh, it just really narrows down your choices and helps you really streamline what computer you really need to get. Well, if you have any questions, right now is the time to send me those questions and I'd love to answer them, love to help give you some feedback on some models that you're interested in. I'm always down to respond to y'all in the comment section. My name is Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. If I've left anything else out, do let me know. I try and cover everything in these videos, but I can only do so much in the time I allotted. All right, if you're interested in more in-depth videos, you can check those out on my channel as well.